Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech Keyboards. And today, we're taking a look at another Royal Clutch Keyboard. This is the RKS85. I'm going to say S stands for the screen. It does appear to have a knob. And I'm going to guess 85 is 85 key. But, I could be wrong. Um, lately, I have reviewed a handful of our keyboards, and I've got to say, I have walked away very impressed from, I mean, RK has always been a name in the community. I, I think that one can trust, and I know I purchased plenty. I, I got one of all of the original RK boards, at least one, sometimes a couple more than one, um, and I modded them, and I learned a lot about mechanical keyboards through them because they were affordable and they were plentiful. Uh, I didn't really ever participate, but in a couple of group buys and gotta say, that's just not my thing. I mean, don't get me wrong, a new product, crowdfunding, I can see how that comes into play, but a company that uses crowdfunding when they're already established and they have more than enough money on the bank to produce the product, just don't see it as fair to those creators and designers that are coming up with new products and really need a crowdfunding model to help get them off the ground. But I digress. Today we're taking a look at this new RK keyboard. It's a TKL format, but it does look like it has a screen and keyboard. And I'm really looking forward to getting in here because I haven't even opened it up. I do my best to kind of stay away from as much of the media and whatever as possible about keyboards. Um, I like to kind of, I like to discover right along with you guys as I find out what it can do, what it can't do and how it looks. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in and see what the RKS85 has in store for us. Now, before taking a look at the keyboard, I do like to see what's inside of the box. So here we have included a standard wire switch and keycap puller branded with the RK logo. We have a standard rubberized USB-A to USB-C cable. And we have some extra switches. Uh, again, thank you Royal Clutch for doing this. I think this is extremely important in pre-built keyboards to include some extra switches because we never know what can happen, whether one falls behind the counter or behind the fridge or breaks or what have you, um, you know, decide to over, you know, lube them again or hand lube them and, you know, accidentally break a spring leaf. A number of reasons. So having not only one, but a handful, four in this situation, spare switches is very much appreciated. Now, I do believe the name of this switch is the cloud switch. It is a medium weight linear uh, does have a long pole, I would guess 3.6 millimeters of travel. It also appears to have an RGB diffuser in there. I would venture to say that these are probably pre-lubed as I don't hear much um, of a ping at all. Um, and they're just a tiny bit scratchy, but the type of scratchy that I think will go away after a few days of use. But uh, as of late, I've been very interested in the switches that RK is putting out. Um, the last one I took a look at was a, a cream or the chartreuse, which I actually bought a set of because I wanted to play with them and I like them. So we've got some nice switches here, some spares in case anything goes wrong. And here we are with the RK S85. Lovely looking and actually quite substantial. I wasn't expecting it to be this heavy, um, but it's very nice. Again, thank, thanks go out to Royal Clutch for including a dust cover that with their keyboard that matches the, the format or the shape of the keyboard. Leaving a dust cover, a dust cover on your keyboard when not in use will guarantee that you will get the longest life possible out of your keyboard. Below the dust cover, we also find the manual. It looks to be a fairly complete manual that goes over all of the features, pre-mode connectivity, and the software because we do have a screen on here. So, all of the functionality, it's nice big letters, and it's all in English. 
and they actually have a link to the download driver address so I don't have to go search in Google for one. Thank you very much, Royal Clutch. Truly appreciate it. So here we are with the S85, and I've got to say, first thing that stands out to me is this lovely big knob. Um, oh, yeah, it is a standard D knob, but as you can see, it is definitely much bigger than most knobs. We're looking at a, basically a 26 millimeter knob as compared to one of the more standard knobs you'll see with knob keyboards is more closer to 18 millimeters. So it's definitely has weight to it. It is a metal outside with a plastic inner cover. And then we do have a protective layer. I'm gonna keep that on there for right now until I get a chance to make my own screen protector from old um, cell phone film screen protectors, cut it out the size, put it in. Now this one does look like it kind of goes over the post, so we'll probably have to make a little hole in there, but I'll get to it. Now looking at the keyboard, it is a, what one would call an F13 TKL, though we don't have the keys for up here as they've been replaced with the screen and the knob, but we do have all the other keys. Um, they have put print screen here because that's probably going to be the one that's most used by people. Um, but beyond that, the only keys missing would be the pause break and the scroll lock, which I would venture to argue is one of the least used um, keys on a TKL or full size keyboard. Now, granted, I'm going to guess that they've already got uh, those two extra keys remapped in case you do use an archaic software that requires those keys. We have a very nice looking keycap set. They continue to put out these um, colorways that I honestly I have not seen before, at least the combinations of. I mean, this is almost the color of denim, but then we have beige that matches the beige off-white color of the case. We do have a very nice design. Um, funny enough, this one's actually veering down. The last two Royal Clutches that I reviewed actually had these flipped, so where if you were looking at it like this, they would be right side up. Not that that's a big deal, but it's nice that we actually have here connection to the computer, and here we have a USB-C in case we have flash drive or a dongle that we want to plug into here like like say perhaps a mouse dongle and you want to have it as close to the keyboard as possible we also have a pocket for the branded 2.4 gigahertz dongle which is always appreciated because when it's branded we're not going to have an issue trying to figure out what keyboard this could go to i gotta say i like this cloud switch it is a little bit deeper than the last switch i took a look at I, the rk cream or chartreuse switch this one has a deeper tone to it. And it's just not quite as loud. Now let's take a look at these keycaps and see what we have underneath. All right, so they are double shot and I'm gonna guess they're PBT. So these keycaps come in at 1.6 millimeters in thickness, which matches the other keycaps I've been seeing from RK. And I've gotta say, they're doing a good job. Um, even some of the better pre-built keyboards have 1.3, 1.4 millimeters. Those couple extra tenths of a millimeter are going to buy a more refined, deeper sound profile. Now let's see what we have for switches here. Yeah, pretty sure this is the RK Cloud. We have what looks like a nylon top. I'm not going to guess on the bottom. And I'm going to guess that might be a palm stem but it is a decent linear switch for sure. Now taking a look at the stabilizers, we do have plate mounted palm stabilizers and they are well attached. They have very nice tolerances and basically don't wiggle. Let's go ahead and take them out and see what kind of lubrication job we have on these. Looks like we have lubrication inside of the stem touching the wire. And we also have lubrication at the elbows. The two points I find most important to lubricate in a mechanical keyboard as those are the spots that are going to have the most contact between the plastic and the metal. 
Now taking a look at the PCB, it does not appear that we have um, the holes for screw and stabilizers. Thankfully we have good plate mounted stabilizers. It does look like we have the Hi-Fi layers, which is the clear PET sheet above the PCB, as well as the IXPE foam. And it does feel like we have some sort of rubber dump dampening below. It could be a silicone rubber, but it's very bouncy. Though it could be neoprene as well. All right, we'll set those back in place and lock them so they're nice and well attached. I'll go ahead and put this in there. Let's see. There's a three and five pin hot swap south facing PCB. Let's see what those lights look like real quick with the diffuser. Ah, that diffuser definitely makes the light come out quite nice. I'm, I like the diffusers. Not only do they allow more light to come up and shine through so that you can actually see it between the keycaps if you're using um, opaque keycaps as I do. It also allows one to remove it and get a different sound profile out of the switch. The switch will probably be a little bit clackier without a little bit deeper with. So that's usually the rules though. Some switches may be a little bit different. They may just be deep and just a little less deeper without the, um, the extra mass. Now for the screen, we can see that we're going to have to match the date, and I'm sure we can do that in the software, but it tells us the connectivity mode, it tells us the time and date, as well as what we have left on power. And then right now it's set up for volume, but then we can go back, change language, it can change the connection mode, go home, time as well as light controls and selection of Windows or Mac. I got to say this, even though I don't believe this one is marketed as a retro, obviously the milky e-white, um, the way that the knob is designed, it gives me very, very much a feeling of like 90s audio, um, audio file equipment. Um, it's really nice and clean. Oh. I just had to pick up right there. Scroll lock and pause. I told you they were probably already bound somewhere. And there they are. The two other keys basically that would be missing from this cluster up here. Though again, as I say, I don't. I think those are probably the least used keys on a keyboard. But if I'm wrong or, or if you use these a lot, I'd love to hear about it in the comments below. I'm honestly impressed with how weighty this thing is. And... Oh yeah, it has no give whatsoever. I mean, it is pretty solid. It does not want to go anywhere. We got the two fold out feet. So we're gonna have three different typing angles and we have some nice rubberized feet that are gonna make sure that it doesn't slide all over our desk. We have some nice clean legends. Um, all of the modifier keys seem to follow a standard capitalization. Um, the legends are actually quite clean and almost perfect as far as their alignment goes. Oh, here we can actually see Windows and Mac mode. We have one, two, three for the um, Bluetooth slots. We have light turn on and off. That's another probably light effect. And... Uh, doesn't have a side light, so I'm not sure what that symbol is for. And it looks like we also have media controls with the function combination of up here. So we can do function plus for volume, or function F12 for volume up, F11 volume down, and function 10 for mute. We also have the play, pause, stop, and then music. All the basic um, shortcuts that I think are uh, part of mission control, if I'm not mistaken. So yeah, we have a Cherry Double Shot PBT keycap set. Um, I gotta say, I, I, I like the colors. And again, I keep seeing these colorways from Royal Kludge and they're not copying any existing colorway. So they're literally coming out with their own colorways. I would honestly love to see these as full sets available for sale. I don't know if that's gonna be a thing, but Royal Kludge, if you're watching, I know I'd personally buy some of these, and I'm sure that other people would as well. But 
for me, this is a very sharp looking TKL. TKL being my favorites, this is definitely going to be going into my daily driver list as, far, as soon as I'm done with production. Just the specs. Today we are taking a look at the Royal Kludge RK S85, a three mode TKL with a screen and a knob. It has a gasket mounted PC plate, a three and five pin south facing hot swap PCB with hi-fi layers. It comes preloaded with Royal Kludge Cloud linear switches and double shot PBT cherry keycaps that measure 1.6 millimeters in thickness. It has a 7,200 milliamp hour capacity battery and comes weighing in at 1,030 grams. The chin of this keyboard sits at 20 millimeters above the typing surface, while the bag sits at 33 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of 7 degrees. Flipping out the bottom set of feet will take the back height to 37 millimeters and provide for an angle of typing of 9 degrees. Flipping down the final set of fold-in feet will take the back height to 43 millimeters and change the angle of typing to 12 degrees. This keyboard MSRPs for $99.99 on Royal Kludge's website before discounts. Links below. So we have a lovely TKL with a screen and a knob. And I mean, this keyboard, it's solid. It weighs nice. It has a 7200 milliamp hour battery. It comes with some nice switches out of the gate. It comes with a really nice set of keycaps. Again, a keycap set that I would love to see and I would probably buy myself. Um, and it's actually reminiscent of the other Royal Clutch boards I recently uh, took a look at. It's, it's using colors we've seen in other keycap sets or colorways, but it's not copying or cloning any existing keycap set that I know of anyway. This does not look familiar to me at all. But I got to say, I'm quite loving this and I'm looking forward to finishing production so that I can get this on my desk and use it more long term. I will come back to this at some point in the future and do some updates. But for right now, why don't we take a quick look at the software? All right, so we download the software from their website and I'll include the links below. The setup is a fairly standard setup. Just go through and install. At the end, we'll be given an option to go ahead and open it. Once we open it, we see that it shows the connected device and we are at the main screen. We have a top layer, a function one layer, a function two layer, and a tap layer. Tap is basically just a quick hit of the key to activate that. So technically we have three different layers on here and we can map another key to function two so that we can map keys with the function two combination. Now profiles over here are meant as different setups. You can have a profile of all three layers programmed in the way that you need it to in case you want to switch from gaming to work, video editing, and so on and so forth. We also have a very basic macro editor. We create a new macro, we can group them together, and then we can go ahead and hit record, type out what we want, stop the recording, then go through either change letters or change the delay. Then we have the lighting effect section. This is where we can either do the per key RGB and set up the keys to be the colors that we want them to be, or we can go ahead and select a pre-existing effect. Under the custom lights, that's where we can create our own light effects and save them and create as many as we'd like. I personally have never gone through and created a light effect. I usually will just pick either a solid color or colors that just kind of go back and forth. Now for the screen mode, uh, it actually is one of the better ones that I've seen out there. Um, it does allow you to select the GIF that you want and it will tell you if it's too big, too small, or if it exceeds, exceeds the number of frames that it can handle. So I had to go through a handful of GIFs to find one that would fit already into the spot and I came up with the, um, I forgot the name of the meme, but the uh, doing the calculations in your head <laughs> meme. 
Once we've selected it and we're happy, it doesn't give us any error messages, we can go ahead and hit apply down at the bottom left to upload the image to the screen. Now this will take some time as I believe it's doing CRC checks in between each send to make sure that none of the frames are corrupted. Once it's done, then the animation or GIF will be on the screen on our keyboard. And we can select between that as the main screen or the time as the main screen. And the last section is the settings. We can set language, we can enable tap, and we can set how long, this is 20 milliseconds for tap. And we can also check for software as well as firmware updates and set our debounce mode to whether we're in a work type environment or a gaming mode. So we have a pretty comprehensive driver for this keyboard. It allows us to do what we need to do. I like the screen um, uploader because it actually will tell you if there's enough frames or if there's too many frames or if it's too big. And you can actually, if, if it's too big, you can either resize it outside of the application or just select a portion of it to display. So. I think that is one of the better ones that I've seen so far out of the different driver packages for uploading GIFs to your keyboard. So we have a real decent TKL here. Um, I I do say that I, I, I know it's going on my desk and I'm going to be using it. I've been rotating through a lot of 75% lately, but there's one TKL that keeps coming back. Um, but this one, I think, I don't know. I like it. I like the looks of it. I'm going to use it for a little bit. I will be coming back to this one as well as the other RKs in the future because I do want to see where we can take the sound profiles and how much we can mod them because, I mean, that's still part of the game. Heck, in one of the RKs, it actually included one of those little pick um, spudgers for opening up the case. So they kind of, I think, expect it since, I mean, RK boards have been known for being modifiable and being one of those, you know, uh, I may not pay that much. I mean, I know I've gotten RKs on sale for 20 bucks, you know, RK61, mod that, that puppy up an hour, maybe an hour and a half worth of modding. And we got them to sound pretty good. Um, I did give quite a few away uh, to friends, you know, and some of them, it was their first experience with a 60% keyboard. But once they got to know that they actually have several layers that they can work with, they went to town. Anyway, I think this is a gorgeous TKL. One that, like I said, it's going to be in my daily driver rotation, and I will come back to this. If you have any questions, comments, or something you'd like me, for me to cover when I do come back to this keyboard, leave your comments down below. I do my best to answer each and every comment as soon as possible. I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys now with a stock sound test of the RKS85 TKL with the screen and the knob. I want to wish everyone out there in YouTube land a beautiful rest of your day. And until the next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.